Well, just a couple minutes before we get started, um, if you could uh, find a seat that feels comfortable for you. So if you need to sit on something, uh, a bit of height, then that's nice. And you can have your knees bent or legs can be out or even one leg out if that feels more comfortable. And while we wait for the next minute, um, you have the choice if you like to start with your eyes closed or the eyes can be open and just keep the eyes soft. So this morning, um, I really wanted to create a, a real embodied flow of yoga. And yoga to me is not just like the physical exercise, it's really more of a moving meditation. And so it's, it's through the watching of the movement and the breath and the connection to earth and the space around us that really changes um, a yoga practice from uh, an exercise into a, a real spiritual practice. Uh, and it can be very powerful. That being said, um, we're playing with a lot of subtle energies. And if you're new to yoga, you might not feel um, a lot of the subtle energies that are there. That doesn't mean they're not there. It just means that um, it takes practice and practice uh, coming to the mat and tuning in and feeling and eventually you start to feel things and um, it's really nice. So at first it's almost a practice of just um, visualizing almost things happening um, but it, it will come if you stay with the practice. So again, uh, finding that comfortable seat and allowing the eyes either to close or have the eyes looking down and the eyes can be soft and taking in everything around you, that periphery vision. So you're not focused on one thing, but on everything. And then feeling your connection to earth. Our relationship to gravity. And what does it feel like to just offer the weight of the body down, noticing the points of the body that are touching the floor? And just letting that be a bit of a surrender. so that we're connecting without effort. And then notice the touch of the air on your skin and your body in relationship to the space around you, the space in front, the space behind you, the space beside you, and also the space above. I want you now to visualize a, a beam of golden light from the center of the earth as you breathe in 
letting that golden light or maybe a red light that comes up from the earth up through the base of the spine moving up through the body up through the top of the head so on every inhale see if you can visualize either a red or golden beam of light coming from the earth connecting up into your body On your exhales, you can feel a sense of surrender back to earth, keeping that connection drawing down, that connection to gravity. And then noticing from the top of the head, maybe a foot or so above your head, I want you to visualize a white light coming down, down from the space around you, down through the top of the head, through the body, through the base of the spine and into the earth. So the exhale, drawing down that energy from the space above you. And we are part of both the earth space and the universal space around us. So let's bring this together in our morning meditation. As we inhale, feeling again that beam of light coming up, up through the body, past the crown of the head. And as you exhale, that energy or that light coming down through the top of the head, connecting back to earth. Feeling that energy moving up and down. Going beyond the physical. And then when you feel ready, you can softly open your eyes, allowing the inner and the outer body to merge. Okay, let's take our hands to our sides, turn the palms to face up, and on the next inhale, let's take the arms and let them float up. 
But as they float up, really feeling them move through that space. And then as you exhale, turn the hands down, let the arms float down. So just continue like that. You can close your eyes if you like and just work with your own breath. Inhale, the arms float up. And exhale, the arms float down. And just notice what it feels like to move your arms through space. What does it feel like from the inside of the body as you move? Maybe the shoulders are sore, maybe we do less, maybe they just come up a little. And then the next time the hands come down towards the floor, let's take our left hand to the floor and we're just gonna play a little bit with leaning. So I want you just to take a moment and just kind of offer the weight down and then kind of lean and push to come up. And just continue like that. So kind of letting the weight come into the hand and then push down to feel how that lifts the body up a little bit. It's not a hard push. It's just a leaning and pushing. And then let's try it a little bit on the other side. So it's like you're yielding to the earth, you're offering the weight down and then pushing to feel that coming up. So it's this softening first to feel the push. And then let's just go a little bit side to side. Let that yield come first and then push and then come to the other side, yielding down and push. And just take your time. And as you come from side to side, again, you have the opportunity to close your eyes and possibly feel what's happening from the inside of the body. What muscles are sort of engaging and can you feel maybe that push right through the bones? And then come back to the side we started on. Lean a little bit into the floor and then give it a real push, an energetic push so you feel the difference uh, where the whole body feels very stiff and um, almost too active. It's not as nice. And we'll do that on the other side, just so you get a feel of the difference of how we kind of attach or connect to earth can affect our movement and our practice. So push down and you feel it's very tight and it's not as fluid, not as fluid. And then slowly come back to center. I think Siri thinks I'm talking to her. I'm here. No. Okay, let's take the right arm up and we're just going to stretch up. Stretch your fingers, open them up, and then come back. And we'll do that on the other side. So reaching up, feel the opening of the whole body like a yawn, or what we call a pandiculation. And we'll just do that from side to side. Feel the whole body yawning and stretching. We see it in animals, they stretch, you know, the cats and the dogs, they get up and they do this automatically. And then when we release from our little pandiculation or our stretch, we feel the body sort of, it feels better. It feels really good to kind of open up into things. And then one more time on either side, feeling it opening through the whole side of your body, reaching, elongating. And then just come back to center, take a moment and just close your eyes and notice what you notice. We feel more open when we're open to this type of movement. Okay, let's transition on to our uh, hands and knees. So you can move, if you like, a blanket underneath the knees if you need. 
and have the knees under hips and the hands underneath your shoulders. And just for a moment, come up onto the tips of the fingers, really feeling those little pads of the fingers. And then lower the hands down, but keep that connection into the tips. So it's like you're gathering the fingers towards the center and the palm of the hand has a bit of air right there. And tops of the feet, leaning, tugging the toes towards you as the heels beam back. Let's start with cat cow. As we inhale, let the motion flow from the tailbone. Let the belly drop and the head comes up. Keep the length in the neck. As you exhale, rounding the back one vertebra at a time, the head drops down last. And you can again close your eyes and feel the movement, that flow from the tailbone to the top of the head. And as you move through your cat cow, just noticing again from the inside what it feels like. Notice the body moving through space. And can you do this movement and offer a little bit more into the ground, into the earth, that connection to gravity? And when we offer a little bit, the movement becomes a little bit easier, a little bit more fluid. And then when you're ready, just slowly come back to neutral spine. We're just gonna take our shoulders and let the chest draw down. So it's like the shoulder blades squeeze towards each other and then gently lean into the hands to widen the upper back. So we're just lowering the chest down, shoulder blades come towards each other, creating a little valley in our back and then pushing down to come up. And just feeling that relationship between leaning into the ground to find that that space in the upper back. So come to a space that feels uh, neutral for your shoulders and your upper back. And we're gonna play a little bit with uh, shifting forward and back. So let the hands push down to find the hips moving back and then slowly push into the feet to come forward and feel the hands rooting down or leaning down and then push down to come back. So just let the body shift forward and back. See if you can get a sense of that yielding to earth as you, as your body moves forward and back. You feel when the, the weight comes into one part of the body, like the hands, for instance, how can you push down to come back? And just offer the weight down when you get there. So the movement becomes a little bit more effortless. And then we can add on a little bit of a rounding of the back. So when we come back towards child's pose, as we come forward, you can start to round the back like cat pose, coming forward a little bit, leaning forward, and then shifting back. Really feeling the body as you move, what's happening in the body. Round the upper back if that feels good as you shift forward. And paying attention to that sort of offering the weight down and how your body naturally shifts. Okay, come back to neutral spine when you're ready. And now we're gonna come into a bit of a square shape. So we're gonna shift our weight in towards the right hand. Let the hand push forward to let the hips move back towards the right knee. And then we shift into the left knee and then forward into the left hand. And just get a sense of that offering the weight down, pushing from one corner to another. Again, feeling that connection to earth and what's happening in the body. And then let those square shape go in the opposite direction when you're ready. Let's make ourselves uh, connect to breath as well so we're not losing that. Okay. 
Okay. And then when you're ready, let's come sitting up, maybe on the heels, or if that doesn't feel good on the ankles, you can come up a little bit and just shake the wrists and, and release them a little bit. Maybe open and close the hands a little bit. And then interlace the fingers, turn the palms away, stretch them out, let them come up and then release the arms down and let's find our way into what we call child's pose so if you need to take the knees apart a little bit that's okay take the arms forward and let the forehead come to the floor now if you have any issues with blood pressure you can take your little block or book and place your head on the block so that your head is above the heart but you want the head to be connected. And if you don't have a block, use your fists, one fist on the other and let your forehead rest on your fists. And I want you to feel your breath in your back body. Again, find the connection of the parts of the body that are touching the floor and how our connection to earth, if we offer the weight down, we can be held and it's effortless. We don't have to do as much to feel. Feel the movement of breath in your back. And then slowly come back up to tabletop when you're ready. If you need to adjust the knees back underneath the hips, then you can. And if you'd like, you can keep your block close by towards the hands. We'll just step our right foot forward into a little bit of a lunge. Our hands are going to stay down. So if you need that extra help with a block or a book or something, then use that. Even a pillow is fine. And we're just going to find that forward and back with the yield. For this, I want you to curl your toes under in the back foot as well. So feel your front foot first, the heel, the toes, let the weight drop down. Maybe the hips sink down a little bit. And as you push to come back, feel the weight shifting and the hips come back. And then push through that back foot. So it's like you're yielding down, softening down, and then pushing to come forward. We're just going to do that forward and back, shifting forward and back, feel the offering down, that yielding to earth, and then that push to come back. So even though it's a simple movement where you're using quite a bit of uh, energy in our legs, just notice what it feels like to shift forward and back. And just one more. And then just take a moment in any way you can start to shift to really have the opposite leg forward. Curl the toes under in the back. Again, you can use your props if you need. Feel your foot in the front. So the whole foot connecting down, the toes, the heel, the back foot you're connecting. And we're going to offer the weight down to shift back. So we offer and push. Offer and push. So it's not just shifting forward and back. We're doing it with attention. We're doing it with awareness. So as we shift this side forward and back, just noticing again what's happening from the inside. Notice if you're bringing tension in through the neck or the jaw or the eyes. Okay, one more. And then when you're ready, let's shift back to the right foot forward or the opposite foot forward. This time we're going to lift our knee off of the floor. And as we shift forward and back from this lunge with the knee up, as you push the foot forward, the back knee will be quite bent. So it's not straight. And then we push that foot forward to come and then we offer the weight down and lean into the floor to come back. So just shifting forward and back and again it's a great opportunity to use a block if you have it for support. 
or even a chair or even a wall. And we're building a little bit of heat now in through the legs. Okay, when you're ready, lower the back knee to the floor. We'll switch sides. Lift the opposite knee up. Take a moment to feel the connection to earth. The front foot yields down and then pushes back. And then the back foot yields to push forward. You feel that movement back and forth. Full awareness of the movement. So we don't have to go really fast, but find a pace that feels good for you as you shift your body forward and back. And then when you come back towards the front the next time, let's straighten out the leg. Take your back foot down. I'm just going to turn so you can see. We're going to turn both feet in the same direction and walk our hands to the center of our body. Okay. So if you like, you can take the feet a little bit more apart. The knees can be bent here. And we're just going to do this a little bit side to side. So again, if you like, you can have some sort of proper pillow in the center if you need. And we're just going to lean to one side, offer the weight, and then push to come over to the other side. So it's not just coming back and forth. We're taking our time to feel the dropping of the weight, push down, come up, and over to the other side. Full awareness. The movements don't have to be big. They might be quite small. You might be quite high up. In fact, you can even have the hands on your legs if you need, if that feels more comfortable for you. Take the time to feel that surrender down, that leaning down to come to the other side. So it's that pushing down to find the lift up, that rebound force. Okay, and then when you're ready, come to the center. Let's just take the, the feet and heel and toe them towards each other. So we come into Uttanasana, our forward bend. Feel the feet in the floor. Root down through the feet, bend the knees quite deeply, and as you push the feet down, feel that rebound as we slowly come up. Arms up in the air, hands together, and to the heart. And then just take a moment to arrive in your Tadasana. You can close your eyes or look down. Notice the connection to gravity, that drawing down, the feet that are touching the floor, all of the toes, the heel. What happens if you offer a bit more weight down? Can you feel that rebound force that lifts you up? These two opposing forces, that downward and that upward moving. Okay, if you open your eyes and take your fingers to the little flap in front of your ear here. And if you hold your fingers here, we're just gonna move our head up and down a little bit from here. And this is the point where the spine connects into the skull. So our spine goes quite high up. And then just come back to center. So it's from this point that we're gonna to start to roll down in a forward fold. So we're gonna take the chin down, and then slowly we're gonna roll as if we're moving one vertebra at a time. And as the body starts to roll down, the knees will bend quite generously. So we're not trying to stretch the back of the legs, we're just trying to open up the whole back body. And then we come into Uttanasana forward fold. Root down through the feet, bend the knees, and as you push the feet down, using the leg strength to slowly roll back up. Try to come up one vertebra at a time. I mean that part of our head and the skull come up last. 
And we'll just continue like this for a few rounds. So if you like, you can close your eyes or make the eyes really soft. Slowly rolling, offering the weight down through the feet. Feeling the space coming through the back. We're not so much stretching, but giving space. Letting the weight of the head when we come down into our Uttanasana to give ourselves traction here and give us more length through the spine. Root down to come up. Okay, so just continue one more round of your roll up. Making sure that you're breathing, staying connected to earth, noticing how your body moves through space. And then when you come back up to Tadasana, again, just take a moment to pause and observe. The eyes can be closed. And then just open your eyes. We're going to move into a version of our sun salutation. Just going to show you first. Uh, so you'll come to the top of your mat. Feel the feet, soft knees, and so I'll just run through one really quick so you can see and then play with it as I go through it with you the second time. So as we inhale, we'll take the arms up and we feel the arms move. On the exhale, stay rooted through the feet, the hips shift back, and you're offering yourself down to the inner light. Inhale, halfway lift, so lifting the head and heart. Maybe hands come to the legs somewhere. Exhale into a forward fold. Hands come beside your feet, so bend your knees as much as you need to. And as you lean into the hands, there's that push back. So that lean and push coming into downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, we feel the connection to earth and we'll lower the knees down to the floor. Point the toes back, let the hips shift back, but the hands reach forward. Fingers are spread. And then as we come forward, you're going to round your back like a cat back. And I'm pushing to come forward. And I'm letting the weight come down into the hands and we'll lift up through the heart, up through the top of the head. As I keep connection into my feet, I'm not letting the hips sink way down. There's still a connection. Push down to come back. Hands are pushing down to come back. Then the hands come back just a little bit. I'll curl the toes under and using that push down into the feet to lift up into downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, we'll lift the heels, bend the knees, and find that kind of push to come forward into forward fold, bend the knees, inhale, reverse one dive. And exhale, hands to heart. Okay, so let's do it all together. Coming to the top of our mats, really keeping that dropping down, that connection to gravity, that, that connection to earth. And as we drop the weight, we feel that rebound force lifting up, feel the space around you. And then with that, we'll inhale, let the arms float up, watching. As you exhale, let the hips shift back, bow forward. Take your time, feel the movement. Inhale, halfway lift, lift the head and heart. Exhale, fold forward. Now lean into the hands to bring one foot back. Push into the front foot, step the second foot back, coming into downward facing dog. Offer the weight down into the hands and feet, and then bend the knees slowly, lower the knees down. Point the toes back, shifting the hips back towards child's pose, towards the hips. Reach the arms forward, fingers are spread, and as we inhale, rounding the back, cat pose as we shift forward into our version of up dog. 
or what we call spinal wave. Heart beaming forward, soft neck, soft eyes. Now push the hands forward, shift back, curl the toes under. Hands come back just a little and then downward facing dog. Let the legs lift you, the feet push down, hands push down. And inhale, lift the heels, exhale, bend the knees. Push to get one foot forward. Push to get the second foot forward. Uttanasana. Root down to come up. Watching. Exhale, hands to heart. We'll do that again. We'll do it from the front angle, maybe. Inhale, arms up. As we exhale, fold forward, bow forward. Feel the body move. Take your time. Inhale, halfway lift, lift the head and heart. Hands can be on the shin, soft knees here. Yes, exhale, fold forward. Take your time. Hands can be beside the feet. Root down into the hands, take one foot back. And then push the front foot to come back into downward facing dog. Let the hands and feet push away from each other. Lower the knees slowly to the floor. Toes connect to earth. Shift back towards child's pose. Reach the arms forward, fingers are spread, and then rounding your back like a cat. Wide open back, nice turtle back as the heart beams forward, lift through the top of the head. Shift back slowly by pushing down, leaning into the hands to come back. Hands come back just a little. And then downward facing dog, letting the hands and feet connect to earth to bring you up. Lift the heels, bend the knees, push off to bring one foot forward, push off to bring the second foot forward, root down, bend the knees, inhale, reverse swan dive up. And then exhale, hands come to heart. We'll do that one more time. So hands from heart, root down through the feet. Take a moment and feel the connection to earth. Rooting down, inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Take your time, feel the body move. Inhale, halfway lift, lift the head and heart. Feel that yawning quality of the body. Exhale, fold forward. Hands come beside, leaning into the hands. Take one foot back, take the other foot back. Downward facing, Adho Mukha. Let the knees slowly come to the floor. Sit back towards child's pose. Take your time, feel the body move. Inhale, coming forward. Your spinal wave, let it feel good. Exhale towards child's pose slowly. And then coming into downward facing dog. So take your time as you transition. Feel the body as you move. Feel the connection to earth. And we'll just stay in your down dog for a breath or two. If you prefer, you can just come into uh, table tall. As you're in downward facing dog, though, let the hands and feet push away from each other. What happens if you soften the knees and really feel that sort of leaning or that yielding to the earth and pushing away from each other? You might find that rebound force up through the center. Okay, inhale, lift the heels, exhale, bend the knees, step or hop forward into Uttanasana, forward fold. Root down through the feet, bend the knees, inhale, reverse swan dive. Really watch the arms as they move through space. Exhale, hands come to heart. And just pause. Notice what you notice. Feel the breath. The beating of the heart. And 
Okay, from the top of our mats, one more time. If you're not there, we'll find our feet, root down through the feet, and we'll just slowly shift the weight into, actually, before we do that, let's just shift the weight a little bit left to right. So just take your time and feel how the body moves. And see if you can get a sense of pushing down, one side to shift over to the other side, and then push down. That sort of yielding and pushing. That softening to earth. And what it feels like on the inside, what is moving on the inside? Notice the muscles that start to engage. Notice the muscles that start to release. And then come to center, and let's take the body forward and back. So maybe towards the heels, and then let the weight shift towards the toes. And just shift back and forth like this, and from the inside, noticing what's happening. What happens if you offer the weight a little bit more and through the feet? Can you do this with less effort? And then let's take those uh, movements into a circle. So just notice how your body adjusts and moves. How the feet attach to the floor and connect. And then let those circles go in the opposite direction. Okay. And now we come. If you're not at the top of your mat, you can come to the top of your mat. Again, find that center, drop the weight down. And now we'll shift the weight into the right foot. And as we let the weight come there, the left foot comes up and we just slowly let that foot step back. Doesn't have to go back very far. And then come up onto toes, turn the hips and shoulders to the front of your mat, and then lower the heels down without moving the hips back. So the hips and shoulders are square with the front edge of your mat. The front knee bends and let the weight come into the feet and let there sort of be a leaning of the feet away from each other. Hands can either stay at the heart or if you like, you can let them come up into what we call Virabhadrasana one or warrior one. So finding our breath, softening our eyes, Noticing the connection to earth and the connection to the space around us. Okay, let's bring our hands to heart. Turn the back foot now open and let that foot wiggle back just a little bit more. Take the front foot now and lift the heel and open the knee up so that the knee comes over top of the ankle and then lower the heel down. Again, find that push of the feet away from each other and then open the arms to the front and back. Now don't come into a sort of military tightness that when we talked about that pushing down earlier, we don't want that. We want to keep almost like you're yielding and leaning or how we, when we stretched up earlier, we were growing, creating that pendiculation in the body. So we don't want tightness. We want energy to move. Take the back hand down to the back leg, turn the other hand up, and then reach up. Bend a little bit more into the front knee and feel that growing right from the hip crease, right up like we did earlier when we were sitting and we were reaching up. Spread the fingers and then slowly let's take this top hand, we'll windmill it down to the floor. Take the back foot back and then lean into the hands to take that front foot back. Come back to downward facing dog. Offer the weight down and then gently lower the knees to the floor. Point the toes back, shift back towards child's pose. Spread your fingers wide, rounding the back as we come forward into our spinal wave. Heart beaming through the shoulders, soft eyes. Shifting back, so push the hands forward. Tailbone leads as you come back 
Hands come back just a little, and then we transition with awareness into downward facing dog. So take your time. Feel how the body moves. Come into downward facing dog, offer the weight. Knees can be bent, lift the heels, and then push down. Step forward. Come back to Uttanasana, forward fold. Root down through the feet to come up. Exhale, hands to heart. Pause, observe. Offer the weight down. Bend into both knees, shift into the opposite foot as you slowly take the right foot back. Come up onto the toes, turn the hips and shoulders forward. Heels come down, front knee bends. Lean into the feet. Adjusting the top leg. And then again, taking the arms up for Virabhadrasana 1, our warrior 1. The heart is lifting here. Where can you soften? Maybe the eyes, maybe the jaw. What's happening with the breath? Let the hands come to heart. Take the back foot now, we'll open it up, take it back a little. Again, adjust if you need to the front foot. And then let the arms grow. So from the heart out. One of my teachers says like one of those sea anemones where from the center, the little spikes kind of come out. So it's kind of like that. From the center, we're growing. Back hand comes down. Front hand reaches up. And then feel that growing, that stretching. We're not reaching, but we are expanding the whole body. As the feet connect to earth, we feel the space that we're creating. And then again, we're going to slowly windmill the hands down or coming down whichever way. Push into the hands so we find that yielding, pushing back to downward facing dog. This time, lower the knees, point the toes, shift the hips back, come into child's pose. And this time, we'll stay in child's pose for a breath or two. So you can use your hands and make a fist, or again, the knees can come apart. Find your breath. Okay, noticing the parts of the body that are touching the floor. And just offer a little bit more down. And then when you're ready, you can slowly lean into your hands to come up. Take the legs around, and if you're at the back of the mat like me, you can move your way up towards the front. And then you can grab a hold behind one or both knees and gently roll onto your back. Hug the knees towards the chest. They can be a little bit apart if you need, and rock a little side to side. And then allow your body to come to center. Take the right hand to the right knee, left hand to the left knee. We're going to move into mortar and pestle. So bring the knees towards the chest. Take the knees apart, away from you, and then back together. So you're creating two circles. The circles move away from each other and then back towards each other. And we roll right over the sacrum. We're releasing the back. So see if you can do this again with a little bit of a dropping of the weight, softening of the muscles, so that the whole body can work really gently. And then let your circles go in the opposite direction. A 
Okay, and then allow the legs to come together. We're gonna to bring the arms to our sides on the floor so the feet are still off of the floor. We're gonna do what we call whale's tail. So let the legs merge together like there's magnets between the knees and the big toes. We're just gonna take the feet up to the ceiling and bend the knees back down. So you're just letting the legs come up and down. Just releasing the knees here a little bit but it does use a little bit of muscle as well. And one more, and let the feet come back down to the floor, separate the feet a little bit here. We'll move into bridge pose. So feeling again the connection into the feet, the 10 toes, the full circle of the heel. Find the inner magnets of the knees and ankles so that the legs aren't leaning into each other, but magnetically, they're drawing in, so that wakes up our deep front line, our core. And then push down into the feet. Let relax. The feet push down and the hips just come up. Or let them come up just a few inches. And then hover there. Let the feet hold you. So the whole body's relaxed except for the feet are holding you. Let the belly soften. The throat soften, the eyes. Connect to breath, and then gently lower the hips back down. So we're gonna do that two more times, and you can let your body choose if it wants to go further. So push down through the feet, like you're pushing through the floor to bring that lift up. And maybe the hips come up a little bit more, maybe they don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter one bit to me. So you decide what feels good to you. Connect to breath. Notice if you're gripping. And then gently lower down. Feel the body connecting again to earth. And one more time. When you're ready, on your own, just really feeling the body as you come back up to Setu Bandha. Maybe the shoulder blades tuck under a little bit. And then gently, slowly lowering down. And then just to release our back, you can do just a little gentle moving twist. So the knees can tick tock a little bit side to side. And then when you feel ready, you can get ready for Shavasana, our final relaxation. Of course, if there's any other movement your body is craving, then honor that and move. I'm going to just sit up for the Shavasana. So I encourage you to keep the heat in the body. As you settle, you might start to cool off a little bit. So put a blanket over maybe, even an eye pillow is nice. Socks on, sweater. And I'm just gonna read a little from an old book that I, I like to read from, from time to time. And, um, this opened up and I thought it might be appropriate right now with um, a lot of people getting angry about sharing supplies with other countries and hoarding things and um, maybe taking a step back and thinking about um, being a little bit of a selfless person. So selfishness can corrode our inner being. We all have the spiritual qualities of gods and goddesses, but we practice them in very small measures. If we can only expand on them through action, worshiping the divinity in others, then we become divine ourselves. The collective welfare is an essential dimension to good action. If desire dominates, 
Let our desire be for a nobler purpose, the good of humanity. If anger dominates, let it be against ourselves for our lapses. Just again, feeling the touch of the body on the floor. And just offer the weight down. See if you can feel that connection or that light that connects us to the center of the earth. Maybe that golden light or that red light that is attaching the parts of our body that touch the floor. I notice the air touching the skin even through the clothes. So we're part of the physical earth and we are part of the space that we all share.
When you feel ready, you can start to deepen your breath. You can softly open your eyes again, letting the inner and outer merge slowly. Become aware of your surroundings. And when it feels right for you, you can slowly come to a seated position. And as we come back to our seated position, again, take a moment to offer the weight down. To feel that rebound force lifting you up. A touch of the air on your skin. And the movement of air inside as you breathe. Let's bring our hands to heart and bow down to our practice. Let's close with an ohm or just listen in. Take a deep breath in. Exhale completely. Then inhale to ohm. Ohm. It's my honor and pleasure to spend this morning with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.